Hey, what's going on my friends? Welcome to another weekly energy update. My name is Victor and this update is for January 31st all the way through February 6th. I'm going to share with you three main themes and then a tip of the week, something to help you get the most out of this very powerful week we have ahead here. Number one, I wrote down into the void, sort of. What I mean by that is sometimes when it really is time to step more fully into our authenticity, including the way we live our life, our career, everything, when it's really time to step up, step into our power, step into our purpose, it can feel like we don't even have much of a choice. It can feel like the energetics simply will no longer support the person you once were. But all of that inevitably implies stepping into your purpose. It's like stepping into the unknown, stepping into the void. Sort of. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. You're going to be highly supported in other ways this week. But what I want to really share is just how common it is to feel super uh, vulnerable, like, like, like almost like you don't know if you can handle that much uncertainty. I know when I was doing this very thing, a big jump for me, as many of you know, I've shared this story a thousand times, but I was once very secure in my life and career as a personal trainer. After a while, it became increasingly unsatisfying, increasingly heavy, out of alignment, even though that's all I knew. And parallel, there is this calling to do what I'm doing now, sharing on YouTube, helping people transform in a, in a different way than I was priorly. But I didn't know how. I didn't know what that looked like. I had no way of telling myself it was going to succeed because it's something I've never done before. But that there came a point where the gym was just not going to be able to continue. And I just could tell based on the energy being so off. It was, you know how it feels when, the, when you're holding on to something, when you're forcing something. And this new energy, that type of uh, way of going about life, it just doesn't work. It, it backfires so much, so intensely, so quickly, you realize I can't do this. Even if it makes perfect sense, even if it makes you feel safe and comfortable, it's just not working. And that's what happened. So eventually I shut down this gym and for the first time in my life, I had absolutely nothing to grasp onto mentally for security. I was literally experiencing like a pure state of uncertainty, the void. And as much as our minds would love to avoid the void, our spiritual awakening for most people at some point tends to bring us into it. And it's, it's a time where you really just feel like I could feel very badly that this, this better work <laughs> kind of thing. And the reality is it does work because only in the void, can you really manifest uh, a life that you're truly capable of living? If you think about it from a soul perspective, most lifetimes on earth, we are not going through a spiritual awakening. Most of us probably either came here from the stars to help out or have had maybe hundreds of lives on the karmic wheel leading us into this life now where we finally wake up to who and what we are. And that's what's happening. And that's why our entire life and reality to an extent is changing and breaking down. And even though it, the, the sting of the void, the uncertainty you feel in your body can be overwhelming at times, it's in that void where anything can be created. And what will be, what is being created, won't be bogged down by your old life situation, your old identity, and your old belief systems that are no longer able to remain in this new frequency you're living in. 
So is going into the void super scary? Hell yeah. Is there anything I can really say to comfort you or anything? Nope, probably not. Maybe this video will take your mind off it for a few minutes, but you turn it off and it's like, you go back to it analyzing your life situation. You're, you're, you're back to like, oh my God, oh my God. But I'm telling you, man, after I closed down my gym, I freaked out for a while. I'm gonna give you some tips if this relates to you. But beyond that, it was not long into, until everything about me and my life shifted. It really shifted. It really transformed. It upgraded into something so perfect for me, so ideal, so satisfying that I am so grateful. I followed my instincts and, and took that leap of faith and went in to the void because in the void, in this exact, it's kind of ironic because the exact uncomfortable nature of the void is part of what gives you the awareness of what you're really capable of. I found myself freaking out in the void. I found out th there was a deeper level of courage, connection spiritually, uh, uh, faith, and just wherewithal, uh, confidence. I, I found these deeper layers within myself that were always there, but I never needed to tap into them because my life was so safe. I, I did things, most people do, we create a life that makes us feel okay. And that's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. But there's value when all of that, when the rug is ripped out from under you and you're left flailing in the air, only in the air, knowing you're about to fall on your butt, do you realize you have wings and you can fly. And, and these wings, they don't go away. The void eventually gives way to a kick-ass life scenario, better relationship and improved self-esteem, sense of self, sense of confidence. But those wings, they're there. And they'll take you other places in life too. And that, that temp, the void is like temporary. You won't always have to be in the unknown. But going into it for a time, it'll show you who you are. It'll show you the wings you have. And then you can fly around through earth in a way that most people only dream of. That most people only read about in books. But you will actually be doing it. You'll actually be flying. You'll actually be living your life in this way from this point forward. Number two is somewhat different, but also very much related to number one. While you fi might find yourself just life pushing you into the void and going through some of the things I shared about, which I'm going to give you tips about with the tip of the week is going to help you big time if you relate with that. But as that's happening, you might find that you're almost like deciding within yourself that you're going to almost like you're going to recognize the limitations of going through life with a closed heart, going through life with your guard up. It's like, it's like this whole week's about, about waving goodbye to safety because safety, it comes at a price. Sure, you could avoid the void, you could avoid the void um, and stay in what feels secure, even though the energy probably won't support that anyway, you, you could do it, but you're gonna be missing out on a lot in life. You could close your heart, you could go through life with your guard up, sure, but, and you, you'll get hurt less often in a sense, but you're going to be missing out at a depth of love and human satisfaction that only comes to people who have the courage to open their heart, even though, even though there is risk in that. It's, it's very much like love, like, like having kids for myself. It's opened me up to a level of love that I didn't even know was possible. But with that love comes a level of vulnerability that I didn't know was possible. So I love my kids so much, it scares me. I, I, I can't imagine if something was to happen to them, I don't even know where I'd be. But I wouldn't trade that situation. It's sort of a total package. You can't have that crazy love without the risk, without the, the, the vulnerability. But when you take them both, you realize that you can handle that vulnerability. You can handle it. Because as you really open up your heart now, and it's okay if it's been closed for a while, most of us have kept our guards up to an extent if we're honest and self-aware for, for quite a while. But when you open your heart this time, there's 
going to be an awareness that there's a new type of safety you can have access to. And it's not going to be, it's not going to be the same type of safety that requires a lot of controlling of outside influences. It's more of a knowing, a resting in the safety that you know that it doesn't really, it doesn't matter so much what happens on the outside. There is a place of within yourself that's completely untouchable. Your source, your center is going to be a lot more accessible to you this week. And it's time to really embrace your true sensitive nature. So many empathic people don't like their sensitivity. But boy, I can understand that to an extent because that sensitivity opens you up to a lot of weird vibes on planet Earth. But that same sensitivity, when and only when it's embraced, can create some of the most amazing healers and intuitives and coaches and friends and husbands and wives and parents and sisters and brothers. It's like an, an empathic person who really embraces themselves, even though they might fall, they might get wounded by some jerk in, in their life, even though they do it anyways. And it allows you to really be what needs to be here on the planet. The planet is not going to change unless we really open our hearts. And you empathic people came here into a world where no one really does that. And yet you can understand why. And you know, on one hand you could, but it hurts so much because you're so sensitive. And yet that's what you came to do. And number three, a guiding light that will be there with you every second in the void. That guiding light that'll help you open up your heart and attract the good stuff, the good people, the good experiences, the love. It is and has always been your intuition. And this week in particular, for one, I recommend trusting it just for obvious reasons, but it's really going to help you with this. Like you don't have to be that freaked out in the void when you're more grounded in your intuition. Cause in your intuition, you'll know, even though the void is the void, you don't know, you don't yet have, logical results or proof of your choices, you'll know it, you'll feel it. And same, same with opening up your heart. You've always been able to read people like a book and you can avoid a lot of the heartbreak that a lot of people go through simply by listening to your intuition. And then that, that allows you to like really get the good stuff. It allows you to attract the really awesome people in your life who aren't going to hurt you randomly, who are, who are going to be there for you, who are going to resonate with you and encourage you and support you and love you. And the ones that won't, even if they seem like they will, even if they say they will, you'll feel the truth. You'll feel that there's something, there's some, there's like a resistance. There's something you're, you'll, you'll be able to pick up on that. And if you just simply listen to your intuition, it's going to be like, even though it sounds very precarious, this, this unknown I'm describing, it's going to be actually a very smooth sailing and ridiculously positive. And as you do this more and more, you're going to realize to the extent that you've already changed. You may have felt these past like few weeks, six weeks or so, a lot of old uh, patterns, a lot of old, yeah, like programs, you could say they are coming up, taking you by surprise. You may have felt temporarily duped by the old self where you'd act it out and experience the backlash of doing so. And that might have caused you to think, man, I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere with the spiritual awakening. Oh man, I'm a mess. All those programs are kind of coming up to be expelled, leaving you in like this void place. And though you're in the void place, there's more access to the version of you that's no longer distorted and influenced by those programs. And that's why all these big things are changing because all those old programs, all those the old conditioning is why you may have unconsciously manifested some scenario in your life that caused you to close down your heart 
or why you clung to some sort of uh, path or career that's safe. That stuff's gone. That stuff is, is gone. You're, you probably can just tap in for a moment. You'll feel there's, there's, so there's something missing in a good way from you and all that's left more so is just you. And the more you sink into your own intuition, the more you're going to be able to ground in that version of you that is capable of having a life that's like 10 times more badass than your, your, your life is now. And having 10 times the, the depth of love than you're allowing yourself to feel right now. And when you can trust your intuition, your guiding light throughout this entire journey and actually take time to tune into it, you're going to be able to have an, your own sort of confirmation. You're going to feel that something inside of you has changed. Okay, now it is time for the tip of the week. What this says here is power hour. Power hour is a concept I learned long ago from a, a, a guy named Tony Robbins. He's a, you probably all know who he is. Really awesome motivational speaker. And he says, we all got to have a power hour. And a power hour is like a chunk of the day that we dedicate to ourselves, to strengthening ourselves, to, to meditation maybe, to, to doing things that support us, that are an investment in our aligned state of being. And I'm telling you, like having been in this void to, to an extreme degree, I couldn't have handled it. I couldn't have made my way through it to get to the, the pot of gold at the end of it if not for, for putting a, a more commitment into my, my daily practice. And your daily practice doesn't have to be a daily practice. Like for me specifically, what my power hour was back in the day. I remember I closed that gym down and it was winter time and I was making YouTube videos, but the bills kept coming in, which I couldn't really afford. And I, I had no real success yet. And that just sort of circumstance was weighing on me big time. I had five kids and I knew I had to pay the bills. I wasn't sure that I would be able to pay the bills and that would put me in such a frenzied state. And yet, I still had to pursue YouTube. That's all I had. But it was so hard to move forward because of the nerves, like the, the anxiety of being into the unknown to that degree. I had to do a power hour. And all I did is me and my wife and my dogs and my daughter, we, she'd be in her stroller, she was younger, and we would walk downtown. We'd walk from our house, it was cold out, we'd bundle up, we'd walk downtown to like the downtown area. And for whatever reason, on these walks, my wife and I, it's like we tapped into our higher selves. It almost felt like our higher selves were having conversations. Even though like when I got back to my house, it was all up in the air, my life. On those walks, I felt like we were walking. It's hard to explain, but I felt like so confident. I felt so optimistic. I felt like I know this is the right path. I know it's going to work out. And I know it's going to be awesome. I knew it was going to be awesome. And I knew I had nothing to worry about, nothing to fear. There was no void. There was no uncertainty. I was just simply following a different type of guidance that doesn't rely on the, the limited capabilities of my mind, but rather was being fueled by the wisdom and eternity of my soul, my spirit. I was now tapping into this and it was showing me where to go in life. And it knows me better than I know myself. And it is something you can tap into whenever you want. But I don't know, this is just maybe for me, but I feel like I lived my life so unconsciously for so long that the, there's a momentum of my ego, a momentum of my limited beliefs, a momentum of my mind that even though there's that place within myself that knows all is well, it's not like I'm always in contact with that. And I need to do something sort of in a routine way to, to recommit, realign with that version of myself. What I found, I found as a coach, I would try to get all my clients to do this. I'd say, you gotta, if they didn't have a daily practice of some sort, I never imposed anything specific because of course it all can work. But if they had nothing, I would really try to compel them to do it because I knew if, if they could tap in 
to that source within themselves that knows on a regular basis, their life is going to transform so beautifully. But what I found is there was a resistance. A lot of people I would talk to, they would not like the idea of that. There was this perception that a routine is not freedom. I want to be able to do whatever I want. But what I found for my own self is that a routine gave me freedom. It gave me freedom from my monkey mind. It gave me an inner freedom that allowed me to make more or wiser choices in my life, more conscious, more empowered choices in my life. And even though I had to kind of make myself do the power hour and I didn't always want to, you know, it's definitely more fun to, to wake up and eat ice cream and watch Netflix. That's what I would want to do. But I'd say, oh, I'm, instead I'm going to wake up and go in the cold shower and then sit still for 20 minutes in, in, in the cold outside or something. I didn't want to, but it, it gave me this inner freedom. And right now, there's just so much potential, so much potential to expand your life, your lifestyle, to open your heart to, to greater depths of love and to truly Truly like live this lifetime in a way that's in alignment with who you really are as a spirit and all the blessings and love and amazingness that comes with that. By the way, my friends, tomorrow night is a new moon and there's a whole energy update I did for the new moon, which is also very relevant right now because it's tomorrow. So I'll leave a link up there if you want to keep going further with some advice for the energy right now. With that said, have an amazing day, my friends. See you next week, Monday. Peace.